So I'm Lydia. I'm a sustainability and social justice uh, post-bac fellow with the Office of Sustainability Initiatives, and I run the Green Office program with Kendra Ding. Julie Newton, an assistant conservator um, for the um, Preservation Office and um, I work on treating rare books and documents and doing exhibition preparation work. I'm Mark Johnson and I work at the Library Service Desk at the Robert W. Woodruff Library here at the Emory Campus. I'm Joe Eckert from the Office of Alumni Engagement and Advancement and very happy to be here today. So the Green Office program at Emory is a program where offices can fill out a sustainable checklist and then become a certified Green Office. From my perspective, Green Office is one that is really filled with every type of sustainability effort that is possible. Now it varies by what the office is. I know in some of our libraries there's some recycling of book covers and things like that. In other um, faculty areas, I know some are uh, making their own, growing their own tea and enjoying their own uh, beverages from the tea that they've grown. Um, again, trying to reduce waste. And there are different ways I think it's implemented in different buildings, but I think we have some common threads in terms of compost and recycling, energy efficient lighting. Um, and I think there's a mentality or philosophy of conservation and sustainability, and we try to play it out in all of our offices as best we can. The Green Office Program provides both suggestions and requirements um, that go way beyond what my colleague um, Brandy started. So just you know, conceiving of ways, and it's a it's a good guideline for individuals who are busy and can't think of all of those things. How can we control? How can we make climate changes in our interior environment? You know, which lights should we turn off or turn on? It's a really the checklist really helps make that much easier. It certainly helped to continue to build my knowledge in terms of our team. I think people are pretty knowledgeable. You'll still see people pause a little bit when they're carrying a number of things to see which container it goes in. But people don't just come over and throw it into any old container. They really do care about it, really do think about it. In the evolution of the, of the Green Office, I, I think it's the, in the last year, maybe the last two years, I really appreciate the social justice aspect, which gets us thinking beyond which bin to thinking about where does this product come from? Whose lives is it impacting? Where is this waste product going? Is it going to some place that is a, mar a marginalized community where the waste disposal process is, is polluting? Your guidelines are offering a much larger global impact picture. Years ago, um, the library started using plastic bags um, as a, a complement to uh, offering our patrons for books, you know, carrying books out of the library, um, particularly to keep the books in good shape if it's raining. And so that we did that for many years, and that at some point um, people brought up to our attention that uh, plastic bags is not the most uh, environmentally friendly way to go there. So we began to look at other options. and so. Uh, we have a particular vendor that we inquired about a, an alternative and they offered um, a reusable bag and we used that during COVID um, to provide a way for people to pick up their items and that worked very well but um, it was also called to our attention that well those those bags even though they're reusable and that was a, um, a progress on our part uh, that they still weren't uh, biodegradable. <laughs> and so um, we thought, well, maybe there's something that we could do that um, would move in, the, in, in that direction. So, uh, we, uh, at first we set up an order and we, we um, actually, I, I think, Julie, I think you were the person that, um, that suggested about the grant from Green Offices, right? I right, think you were. right. And so we, we got the grant and we decided to go with um, the design, design and a coloring of the bag that um, not just uh, promoted 
uh, the, about Emory and, uh, and the library, but also the um, sustainability office. I think that we try to integrate those uh, principles at home, uh, try to think about something so simple as walking to a certain location as opposed to driving, um, and just reinforce that and remind ourselves of that at home every day. This new, um, this new co committee coalition is some 10 Emory libraries plus the Carlos Museum um, delegates from the various libraries and departments coming together saying, okay, we've got the green office checklist as a base point. How can we move beyond, or how can we complement this? What other things can we think about? Um, colleagues in Rose Library are thinking about um, limiting air travel. Um, my colleagues in the conservation field are, since the pandemic, are offering more hybrid conference situations. So we're really using, we're using the Green Office Checklist as the springboard for, for even longer term, more ambitious and more overwhelming <laughs> kinds of um, aspirations. I think um, one of the things that we haven't really spoken of directly is just how, uh, how easy it was to get a grant, for example, and how friendly the staff was at the sustainability office. And um, that was just a pleasure to communicate with the staff there. And um, they, just, they just made it a, um, just a pleasurable experience, and a fun experience to pursue the, our goals. So um, I, I don't think anybody should, be, uh, should hesitate to reach out to the office. Yeah, and I'm certainly willing to, willing to say to someone, it's easy and it doesn't hurt. To a colleague who asked me about the Green Office Checklist and whether their office should go through that process, I think the first thing I would honestly say is, why not? What's the obstacle to trying to do this to try to improve the efficiency for your office?